talked to a lady who had seen uh, one of the giant mummies that came out of Lovelock Cave, and this lady swore uh, it, that thing was. She said it, her brother was like six foot six, and it made him look small. Now, you were talking about, just go over it again, just how big it was and how it impressed you. To me, it looked like, well, because it's laying on the floor. Okay. And it's in this glass enclosed. I guess it's supposed to be a coffin. I don't know. But from his, like, here down, I mean, he looked enormously long. So, to me, he was seven feet or more. And the bones were all together and not pulled apart. And... I don't recall. The, I, they're, to me, they were interlocked. I mean, they were just, the bones went with the body. It the, wasn't. It right. wasn't fake. Yeah. But his his head. I don't recall any hair being on his head, and I don't recall seeing his hands. Uh, but there, what about the skull and the face? The skull, well, to me, the the nose holes, the nostrils were larger, and the skeleton, the head of the skeleton was not humongously different, but it was longer than what a normal skeleton head uh -huh. that I've seen. Yeah. That's. You know, to me, he was a real skeleton. And when you saw it, what was your reaction when you saw it for the first time? I just thought, oh my God, because it was so big. I mean, I've never seen it. My brother's six, what, six, 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 seven. This thing was a lot bigger than my brother. Wow. And I mean, to me, it was just, I've never seen anything that huge, that long. So when he was standing up, you know, it would have... Yeah, it would have been like a, a giant, really. Yeah, yeah. Oh, to me, he would. Yeah. He was a giant laying down, so I can imagine when he, if he was standing up. But I don't, I don't recall the color of his bones. To me, they were quite white. But I really can. This was back. I can say this was back in the eighties. Yeah. And I, a long I time ago. Oh yeah. And I saw him one time. And that yeah. was it. Well, it's not the kind of thing you want to see every day. I mean, it may end up giving no, you nightmares. <laughs> yeah, but it, just, it was just unusually big. For, uh, you know. When you, when you find something that's that's worth being an attraction at a museum, it's got to have something unusual about it, you know? Yeah. All right, folks, we're back with MK Davis, and it's been uh, quite a 24 hours, that's for sure. How's it going, Sheldon? Thank you for being there. Thank you for always being there. One of these days, I think I'll make you monitor or, or moderator, as they call it. So, hey, how you doing, MK? <laughs> well, I'm good. How are you, Michael? Well, it's been, I feel overwhelmed at times, so then uh yeah, we were talking a little bit, let me sidetrack a little bit uh, about uh, what I saw last night. I saw a streak of light in the sky and tried to take a film of it. And then I swear I'm on my, um, I don't know how you say it, but I would swear my on the Bible, I guess, as they say, uh, that um, I saw a very spherical ball-like light. Can I share? I'm, I'll show you your picture back at you. Okay. Can you see that? Yes. Now, that shows it a little better. Uh, of course, it's distorted because I, it was not stable. And I normally use a, a, a tripod, but I, I only had like a few seconds to take a picture, so. Well, you don't always have your uh, your choice about what when opportunity is there. You have to just go for it. Uh, uh, photography of any type is mostly opportunity. It's a. Uh, I mean, you got to know some stuff, but it's mostly you're in the right place at the right time. The right situation. Yeah, you got to be set up too. I mean, it was it's night. It was dark. And my camera wasn't really set up for taking night images. Uh, 
And I imagine it might get a better image if I had my flash up too. It was pretty darn close. So as I told you, it was it lit up the roof of my neighbor's houses, and uh, and the, and the top of the trees. So I don't even know how big it actually was. It looked, it seemed big, but then, like I said, you know, there's actually there's like. I wonder if I have a. I don't know if I go with this, but there seemed to be something trailing it, and there was a balloon as well. And of course, there's been reports about this balloon nonsense, and the Chinese and all that. And then we we think about Project, uh, uh or what's it, uh, Blue Beam? Is that what it is? And this all, you know, the possible fake alien invasion, and also tying it all in with their agendas, the bigger agendas, or maybe. How much of this is just? A, a light show, you know what I mean? How much is it just... Uh, it would have to be pretty expensive to be streaking across the sky like that. Uh, yeah. I mean, they can do it. They can. They they could stage something like that, sure. Well, but, you're yeah. thinking of Michigan, there was a little bit of a shutdown of the airspace yesterday, apparently. It was, it was lifted. It was, wasn't up long, but and I mean, I'm telling you, it was going basically. It's almost, I mean, in practicality, it was literally on the Michigan, Ohio line, borderline, for whatever that's worth. And because um, I can see where the alleged uh, line, the border from Michigan, is from my back. That's how close I am to the alleged Michigan borderline. <laughs> so I don't know. I, it's. It uh, was quite particular, peculiar that it happened uh, so conveniently, you know what I mean? And of all places to show up, I just wondered how many other people saw anything. And I haven't been able to find anything on the news yet, but for whatever it's worth. But yeah, so well, go ahead. Go ahead. They, we're, we're, these are the days, uh, you know, used to be somebody may never see a UFO or anything like that in their lifetime. And now... It's a common place, and even it's on the news, and and it's press coverage, and uh, the government admits it. Uh, wow, what is going on? It does make a person think, don't it? And because we and there's we have it's quite rational and reasonable to question the government narrative because of um, you know past behavior right i mean <laughs> you know what is really going on is it just simply you know and you know it doesn't make any sense to me mk so why, why would i mean china waste their time and energy and money <laughs> unless it might be has some kind of connection with the, the next phase you know they're supposed to as the world economic forum and over there and and and, and gates and everybody and saying with the next pandemics you know they're going to use that as part of that excuse, you know what I mean? Because, uh, you know, it could be a pretty good delivery system to make some people sick, if you think about it. You know. Well, I mean, yeah, it's, if it's highly contagious, all you got to do is get it started. <laughs> it'll, it, will, it will take on a life of its own. Yes, it will. And that's the thing. And, and, uh, I mean, if we think about propaganda and how important it is, especially in the beginning stages of a major conflict, prepping the prepping the population for it, you know, with what's been going on this past 12 months makes you wonder. I mean, my history, you know, what I study of history, it looks, it reminds me an awful lot of the beginning of World War I, to be honest with you. <laughs> Very similar tales, but with different technology this time, so... MK I, did. That's, that's the first time, really. World, World War II is the first time I can remember where the, the government staged something. Now you we're know, talking. Uh, we're talking about uh, over there in Hawaii and Pearl Harbor, right? Well, no, no. I'm, I'm thinking about the the uh, German government. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. They blew up the Reichstag and then blamed someone else in order to start persecutions and stuff like that. You know, it, it used deception and, de and, and deviance and, and misdirection. Uh, uh, you know, it's uh, and, and, and stuff now that you hear about uh, down through the years and now 
especially where people have lost kind of lost their trust and yet, yet they wonder and legitimately so if if the, if if this is not some example of that you know uh why, why would they do it uh how do you we hire the government i mean if we elect them we hire them how do you hire somebody that won't do you that way you know how do you how can, what guarantees that they won't get up there and they just tell you a bunch of junk. Well, um, from anybody, if anybody's been around the block a, a few times, you should be quite competent in that there is not much being told to you that is true. <laughs> it seems to, I, you know, it seems to be, at the end of the day, the oligarchs, it just seems to be a proven strategy that the biggest thing is do not tell the populace, do not tell the peasants. The truth about much of anything because if you give up your hand then you give up a lot of your power and perceived authority right as long as you have this you know the perception being offered up to people that you are in the know and you have all the information so just trust in us um and get people busy doing their own things and raising their families and then you know it's quite easy actually to manipulate that be manipulated. In fact, I have to be, I'll be honest, for most of my life, that's what I would describe my life. One manipulation after another, one bit of misinformation and disinformation after another. That's why it's important. I think it's a value, you're a valuable resource in the, this, re, this area of research because you're willing to do the research and share some of it and not just do it and, you know, profiteer off it and try to make which I, you know, if you're doing it for the right reasons and you're sharing truth to the best of your ability, you know, with you know, there's always going to be the question marks, right? Because we're such limited knowledge that we all are operating on, right? Um, but if you do the best you can, right, you figure out what's going on, you start seeing correlations and connections, and develop uh, uh, some theory, sound theories. What's going on? Uh, but it's fight is what's going on. I mean, it's quite clear that social engineering has been around our whole lives, right? Yeah. So. And and also the the threat of of socialism. That it's always been something that's if if you don't watch it, so people will. People will try to establish it in your government or in your country. It's it's rejected by most people because it's been tried, but the, the socialists think that they didn't try hard enough. You know, <laughs> it could just if we could just have one more chance, you know, and so they they weasel their way back in you know, using deception and all kinds of misdirection and stuff. And, and oddly enough. Once they get in there, they accuse anyone who might object of, of misinformation. <laughs> the very thing that they were good at, they accuse the population at large. Uh, it's, it's, kind of a, it's, it's kind of a crazy thing. Who could sort such a thing out? You know, it's, it's, the average person get, quits caring. You know, after a while, it gives you a headache and you quit caring. That's, I think it's part of the strategy, isn't it? Yeah, yeah kind of. Yeah. You know, it's clearly it's what it is, right? You, if you, you, after you do enough research and observation, you realize how many times you have been misled and deceived. You're just like, well, whatever. And I think that's where they want us in a lot of ways because if you feel like you have, you're powerless over the situation, you just will. Withdrawal, right? And um, it's a very powerful tool that, as far as manipulation goes. How, how many things about about the pandemic have we now found to be untrue or exaggerated? Or, you know, it's a it was a bad pandemic. It killed a lot of people. I I, I have friends that died, but then on the other hand. 
some of the things that we were doing to mitigate it were caused it. Well, it wasn't. It wasn't of any value. You know, well, it, it's just it's causing people to 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 have mental problems. Uh, yeah, or, I can share you a few things. Like my mother, she after they gave her the jibber jab, she ended up having a blood clot in her brain and stroke and died a few weeks later. Oh my gosh, I hate to hear that. And I know uh, when I was out on the street, you know trying to warn people, one of the things it did was called the magnetic test. And that is those who took jibber jab were, um, you know, keys and magnets. I would say, you want to see if you're magnetic or not after taking the, the thing. And sure enough, the few people that were brave enough to do it out of the hundreds that I asked, only 22 were willing. Uh, well, 11 well, were, were, were exactly. magnets. Did you put a magnet on their skin or what? what did well, you it is a key and a magnet. And so wherever the location was, the, the, by the way, some of them, it wasn't just sticking where the location and where the incident happened. It was the other side, too. There was magnetic. Their foreheads were magnetic. My, <laughs> my little brother, was, he and his kneecaps were magnetic. So, And then that just goes into this thing called graphene oxide. And I want to tell you the reason why my uh, sort of Oh, God. That's the reason why I took down my channel. One of the things that took down, I don't know if you knew this, but uh, maybe you noticed that on Facebook, but when you were doing your live yesterday. Oh, uh, Thursday, they took, they, they banned me from doing any lives or posting up videos on my other channel. So I had to start new ones. <laughs> this is what we're doing here on my new channel, which is not the first time this has happened to you because they took down my channel on the 6th of. January of 2021 as well, along with thousands of other small channels. And I think they're worried about not so much the big channels. I think they're easy, more easier to, to manipulate. It's the small channels like myself who uh, are not invested financially in this stuff. So, you know, um, and, and, and death by a, a thousand cuts. So I think that's what they're worried about, right? And, you know, if there's, if there's uh, thousands of guys like me talking out, we actually ironically have more of an influence than the big names because of uh, the people have uh, you know there's groups of people that follow me and and they usually are like minded thinking people right so and so that's what they did in, in the early morning of two, uh, January 6, 2021 I woke up and my channel was gone and it was the same old thing they, you get, I, did you get any kind of explanation Oh, they, what they've been using is this called medical misinformation, right? The irony is, is that last week, anything that I said or posted was not anything that was not already posted on YouTube or shared on channels like Fox News and all the big channels, right? But it just, they just says medical information. They said I had too many strikes. And I'm like, well, I didn't know I had any strikes at all on this new channel. But apparently they are holding on to strikes from, if I did have any, it must have been from a year ago. So uh, it is what it is. You know what I mean? If you're going to speak truth, you know this. There's always going to be pushback one way or the other. So, Well, you can't fight an algorithm. Yeah, it's true, isn't it? And you try, and I did contest it, and it's like, well, they never, as usual, they're, now if I had, if I, it's maybe one of the bigger channels that had legal team and all that, then I might have a little more recourse. But uh, hey, Julio, you're back, man. Thank you, man. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, anyways, this is where, as usual, this is the, how it. When you're talking to a friend, which I consider MK to be a friend and somebody I respect, um, that uh, conversations like this go all over the place. But I think, I think it's valuable. So that at least it is for me. So um, we got an image posted up here. We'll share this. Um, MK has got his hat and all sorts of things. Um, and he's not the only one that's got a hat and all, and all these these things. Let's try to see if we can share this. What is going on? Okay, there it is. So that's not MK's hat. I think that's Ron's hat, isn't it? No, that, that's Don Monroe's hat. Don, Don's hat. Excuse yeah. me. It's not Ron. I wanted to say Ron. So, yeah, um, and it's hard to see what we're seeing here, but maybe as time goes on, 
Um, and maybe if if you're interested, I don't know if you're prepared. If we don't even go down this route, we don't. But uh, I find it interesting watching that video, and it's there's several videos that he has posted up on Facebook about uh, the Law Block Cave, that area. Um, is that Carlson? Is that what it is? What is the area called? Oh, what, where Love Lock Cave is? Yes. Uh, that's uh, northern Nevada. Oh, I, you know, it's near, it's, it's, it's outside of the town of Love Lock. Okay. But the, where the lady was in Carlson? Oh, oh, yeah. Carson City. Carson. That's why I say Carson. Yeah. Let's get that. Yeah. Right. Name's terrible for me. So, so they had that support allegedly. They actually, as, as as late as the 1980s, they had bones of the well, scene. Yeah, that, that thing was on display. I, I've talked to a lot of people who saw it. It, it came out of Lovelock Cave. Uh, they, uh, but when, when NAGPRA, that's the North American, uh, it's Repatriation Act, is what it is. Uh, what they made a law that you, if you had human remains, you had to return them to the, the tribe that closest closest kin, and uh, they they reburied them. And I don't know that I don't know if they did that or not, or, or, or if they just decided to take it off display. But when when uh, Nagpur came along, you know, a lot of a lot of those uh, places had remains. Uh, I remember I went out west one time years ago, and they had these advertisements on billboards that said, see the thing. And that's all it said. Uh, 222 miles, see the thing. And then they have a, 20 miles down the road, they say, see the thing. And they yeah. give you the mileage from there. And then by the time you you made it to where there was no miles, you were ready to see the thing. And, and I went in there and, and it was a, a little bitty mummy they found in a cave, a little child. Uh, and, you know, it was uh, real. It was authentic. They had it, you know, an under glass there in a gas station. A Kind of a convenience store of the day. It was more gas station than convenience store. But you won't find that now because you can't. You're not allowed to do that. No, and now that we're now specifically talking about these uh, bones. So where are these bones now? Do you have any idea? <laughs> I mean, uh, those bones? No, I, I don't have any idea. They may have just taken them off display and done something. You know, you know, just hit them or something, or they may have actually turned them over to the tribes and let them rebury them. I, I really don't know. Uh, there's a lot of arguments that have been made uh, that, you know, the certain set of bones are not Native American. Uh, it happened with Kennewick Man. They, were, they wanted Kennewick Man to rebury the Native Americans did. And uh, scientists said, wait a minute, this is not a Native American person. Even though he had an arrowhead embedded in his back. <clears throat> they had him DNA tested and he tested to be Caucasian. And he's also very old, like 11,000 years old, something like that. <laughs> uh, and and they, uh, they found him uh, in the water of the Columbia River. Uh, and these people that found him they just saw the skull first and then they kept seeing more and more bones. And they, when they got through gathering up the bones, they had them all. And uh, they, they took them to the university and that's where this years long battle began between the, the Native Americans and, and the scientists and universities. And the, they eventually got a judge to side with them that they had, this was not a Native American. They had no claim on it. Uh, so if they won't let anybody look at it. Nobody. They got him under lock and key. And they went out to where they found the bones and dumped 
concrete and riprap over the whole area uh, to prevent anyone from finding any more. It just doesn't make any sense. It, well, well, but that, I mean, so obviously, there, there, there's, there's, there's some reason. I, I so. mean, um, why, why hide our history? I don't, you know, people say it's religion, but I don't even see really any reason, even religiously, why that you would hide that. I don't see any value. I mean, it's not like in scriptures, it doesn't mention giants and <laughs> you know what i mean so i don't know why that would be the issue so i wonder sometimes if there's something more um going on even you know, let's just go beyond because let's be honest these people that run this this joint you know the rulers of evil as i call them they don't really you know their treaties or they value them as about as much as um you know i don't know uh, a meal from um I don't know McDonald's or whatever. You know what I mean? It, they, it's not really. They, it's, it's not. I don't know why they would even care. In the end of the day. you know how many trees have they not, or have they have just disemboweled, uh, uh, disrespected, uh, you know, just threw to the side. So it's not like they value treaties. So why do they? Why are they so concerned about uh, indigenous rights, from indigenous people's rights, when they've never, ever? I mean, you get the social pressure all you want, but at the end of the day, they don't care. I, I really, I really, I really don't understand I, I, the issue. Uh, I understand that they have those rights, and uh, I understand why. But you know, like I said, uh, the fighting—you know, they're going to court. What they tested to be not a Native American, you know, so. I really don't know why they, they still felt after that that they should bear in, but they did. Uh, you know, so they they keep it under lock and key. I don't know why that either. They do that either. I don't know why they won't. Well, let listen, I'm gonna throw out something that's a little bit bizarre and off left field, but maybe there is something to it, and we just don't recognize it. Necromancy and the, and the the bodies of the ants, bones and of you know. Uh, you know, we look at like uh, Catholic tradition of uh, relics, right? And uh, claiming they're this, that, and the other. Usually, to be fraudulent. But regardless of that, you'll see these these you know skeletons and bones and skulls and and, and the lower chambers of cathedrals and in the Vatican and etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. And there's a reason for they do it. There's not just simply superstition. Um, I wonder if they maybe have, there's a connection to that, that maybe at the very top, at least, whether it's true or not, whether there's any scientific or legitimacy to their belief, maybe their belief itself is the contribution to hiding these bones. Does that make sense? In other words, if they actually believe that there's supernatural power of these bones and these bits, right, and pieces. I, I, don't, th I don't think that's the case. I, I think that if the the belief system, at least on some native tribes, are, are very similar to like the Egyptians. They believe that when you pass away, you go to another life. And they prepare the body just like the Egyptians do. They make a mummy for that life and, and they send everything that it need, he needs or she needs to, to maintain their that that other life uh and i know the natchez indians would would sacrifice all of a person's servants if it was a real important person like their chief their chief is called the son right right yeah and and they would take if he died then and, and this they would volunteer to do this i mean now, when you say the son like with the you or no first of all uh, s-u-n okay. son they call him the son all right uh and he, nobody could even approach him without this going through this cleansing and ceremonies. Uh, he was, uh, it was, it was very Egyptian like. Uh, but when he passed away, uh, all of his servants they would take a tobacco, and, and they would grind it up in a 
pestle and mortar until it was just a, a, a puree. Uh, and then they would dry it, roll it into ball and dry it, make a peel. Right. And they would give their servants, they would take them up on the mound and, and they would have two people, one on either side, and they'd put a cord around their neck and they would swallow three of those tobacco pills. They were like 10 times more powerful than, than regular tobacco. And they would go out of it pretty quick. And they would go like this. I th you disappeared. Oh, there you are. I'm trying to see if I want it. To, I know it's not very good, but I'm going to, uh, I'm listening to you. I'm just going to hide. I'm going to sunbathe while we're talking here. Is that all right? <laughs> yeah, I'm going right. to soak up some sun. So, well, anyways, they uh, as as they begin to fade out and go unconscious, the the two the two cords would tighten up around their neck, and they would transition them to the other life in a painless fashion. They would cut off their air as they can no longer. And they as they, they were not conscious anymore. Huh. They when they when they were right in between the uh, consciousness and unconsciousness, they would tighten up, and they would send them over to the other life to be with the sun. And at, at times, there has been as many as a hundred people sacrificed uh, whenever the sun passed away. If, if you wanted, they kept a temple on top of the mound <clears throat> called Temple of the Sun. And they kept an eternal flame there. And they had four guys that were responsible for keeping that flame going 24-7, 365 days out of the year. And if, if they let it go out, then they would be put to death. Uh, so, so you see what you know, they had a religious concept similar to the Egyptians. And it, it, if they, uh, they needed to have the body, you know, in order to be there. And I know that, uh, Ishii, <clears throat> the last, the last truly wild, you know, uncontacted, uh, Native American to come out of the woods in, uh, uh Orville, California, <clears throat> Excuse me. In in 1911, this is one of my brother was, by the way, in Norville, California. Just for when he passed away, yeah. uh, he he had told uh, his his caretaker uh, 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 Krober, Alfred Krober. He says, "I I don't want to be autopsied. I don't want anything like that done because my beliefs are that I need everything to go." to the happy hunting ground or whatever they called it, the other side. Okay. He was assured that that would not happen. But when, after he died, Alfred Krober had his brain removed and sent it to the Smithsonian. And years later, this was way back in the early 1900s and years later, there was an anthropologist named Oren Starn who was writing a book, and he was he was looking through the Alfred Krober's paperwork, and he found that letter to the Smithsonian. And when he did, he immediately turned the letter over to the local native native tribes. They made a a legal request to return the brain so they could put it with the rest of his remains and they denied having it. <laughs> and then they produced the correspondence letter between Krober and the Smithsonian. And when they did, they came up with it. And it was in a vat with 35 other brains floating. So you, you see what I mean? It's uh, they Why eventually you got. <clears throat> Why would you have eighteen thousand skeletons? Imagine how many bones that is. How can you couldn't st well, study that many bones? 
Right. I mean, so it's like, I don't know. I could be absolutely well, wrong about this. It seems like there might be a correlation with, you know, if you think about the Jesuits and all these other priest craft, these people that do practice a form of necromancy and they do value these things. And I wonder if they think that there's some kind of, I'm talking not about the native Americans. Now I'm talking about the people coming out of Europe that have that conquered this place. Our ancestors, our ancestors. <laughs> well, that, the Native Americans deserve better than that. That that is they terrible. Sure That's a mess and miss. That is not just mishandling. It's it's a uh, it's almost criminal. I, I'd say they they they're not they're it's immune to they're it's immune to the, it's they're so immune to the Repatriation Act. They don't have to return anything. Uh, Orrin Starn, to his credit, got got issues brain, you know, through his actions and the, and then the, the the local tribes got that brain returned and interred with the rest of his remains. Th that was important to Ishi. And they got it done. And uh, so uh, it took them what a hundred years. <laughs> but that that's 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 what they're talking about. You know that those those beliefs, whatever they are, should be respected. It's not something, you know. But, you but can't obviously dig up they don't. So. Somebody's grandmother and dig them up and play with their bones. Right. Well, there just has to be some kind of more or, or something rational, or some logic behind it. In other words, we're, maybe it's, there's nothing rational at all, but there's there's got to be. I don't see the value in us hiding all this stuff. I, um, I mean, you could might say, well, it's because of land craps and all that, but honestly, they didn't care before. Then, you know, if it, it might is right in their minds, you know, we're talking about the, the oligarchs, the, the the rulers of this place. If they don't, you know, if they want to take your freaking place, they're going to take your freaking place, regardless of what laws are in what place. So, why are they so obsessed with bones? I mean, that's. That the Native Americans, it, it's part of their their. No, belief. no, I'm not talking about the Native oh, Americans. You're talking about you're talking about the. I'm the, talking. The, I'm talking yeah, about our bosses. That, you know, the, the powers people. that be. Right. Why are they so obsessed about the bomb? I, I, I can tell. I can tell you uh, what might be it. Uh, in the early days of the Smithsonian, and they first opened up their anthropology department. They the general belief was a eugenics type of belief that there were better people and there were worse people and you could you could read a person's skull uh, you could measure it read it and tell if he was uh, a superior or an inferior person or less than human it was the smithsonian you know they in the early part of the united states history they actually, in law, had listed people as three fifths of a human. And I would argue, MK, that not much of that's changed to this day. Uh, well, there's there's still some of it that goes on that hadn't legally changed. Uh, but when I mean, you look at Gates and Melinda and Bill, they uh, but we don't have it's, it's not state, about, it's, it's not state sponsored anymore. It used right. to be state sponsored. Uh, that's why the, the blacks couldn't vote. Uh, there was women. Anybody, if you were, you had to. They read the the, the in, de Declaration of Independence in a literal fashion. You know that all men are created equal. That that they didn't. That's uh, not women, <laughs> and, that's right. and, and not not blacks because they were three fifths of a man. And uh, you see what I mean? They they devised ways to get around that. Well, I would argue that there's uh, um, the powerful subculture that is still running this place still have that mentality. Well, perhaps eugenics. Uh, you know, the Nazis got it from here. Uh, That's true. And and they you know they took it a, you know to another level. But uh, it's it's you could you. You know, if you were like in a war with somebody, 
they would go to the, the anthropology department there, the government would, and get who are we up against? What is their intellectual potential? Mm -hmm. And they, they said, well, due to the size of their brain and the bumps on their head, and well, I'm not gonna say that they're not they're not a he, full human being, you know. <laughs> so if you if you get a chance to blow one up, blow him up, and uh, and <laughs> they're they're not gonna perform like a human. They're not gonna have the uh, the uh, the the morals, so to speak. They'll cut your head off and lick the blood and all that, you know. Uh, <laughs> It, it, it's it's crazy. It, 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 it seems it's, crazy, but it was real. And it still is, I believe. I, I still, I mean, if you, it, it's, it clearly still is. Um, and that's an unfortunate fact. And in, in a strange way, this kind of goes back to Sasquatch. Think about that. Think about it for that second. If they, that especially you spent an exorbitant amount of time, and if you have, do you have like a good image, the truest, I know you do, the truest image of Patty, color wise and everything. I know you were talking about yesterday and you're breaking it down. And I don't know if you'd be willing to share one of those images with us and post it on there uh, because it is, it's all relative to all this thing. But if these things, things we call Sasquatch are part human or human or some type of people, and these are, we still have these kind of, yahoo's out there running the show uh, it might make uh, how do i say this there could be part of the motive is to get rid of all those it's almost like a eugenics program let's put it that way well yeah a eugenics uh in, in back in the 1840s the state of california had a three million dollar uh, coffer that they paid in individuals to bring in Native American scalps and they would pay you a bounty for that scalp. Now that's what they do to animals. You see what eugenics does? It, yeah. it reduces a human being to less than a human being. And, and you can, it, it legitimizes hunting them down with dogs and horses. This is going back to Patty now. I'm yep, tough. exactly, exactly. <laughs> I'm here. I'm here. It happened, here. It happened yeah. then, and it it could be happening now, even as we speak. So I don't know if you understood my, my request. I don't know if that's something you want to do or not. Just let me know if you don't. But if you got an image that we could share of, uh, I would like to for the folks to see the most accurate image that you have found of Patty, color wise. Uh, everything you know what I mean I'm saying because yeah, there's well, a lot let of me, uh, let me look for for I've got so many of them I want to make sure I get well while you're doing that with the, I'll talk while you're just, so um yeah so there is a connection just there's such you can't just be myopic about this the machinations that go on out there that it's complex and when you see what's going on the love luck and the skulls there, and what's going on in that cave, and what you guys found in that cave, and what you found on the ground, those footprints, and you took about Patty, and then you took about eugenics, and you took about uh, religion itself, uh, extremist religion in particular. Uh, there's, there's certain people that are so, their minds have been so twisted that they have a hard time seeing others as equals or as human beings but you know i mean let's be honest with us if you take you can use the scriptures if you will um to um as a way to actually manipulate or justify what you've been saying how to uh take advantage of other people right uh take their land take their resources get rid of them literally and we've seen this not by a few thousand or a few million, but but probably we talked about hundreds of millions of the last century. And I'm pretty confident that those numbers are pretty darn low when you put everything in totality, right? You know, because war comes in many different facets, right? It's not just guns. There's butter involved too, right? There's a there's a, the use of 
propaganda, the, the use of all of other devices that we conjure up in order to um, take from others. So you don't necessarily have to have bombs or a balloon floating over your house. Uh, it, uh, there's many other ways to do it. So one of the ways to do it is convincing people that what we're dealing with is something less than us or less valuable than us, right? Whether it's history, whether it's something like Sasquatch, which I'm still, I, more and more I study this, I, I what we're, at least where I'm at, we're not dealing with what you got out west. You know, my brother lives in Orville, and he, around that area, like I said, he had a siding with a Sasquatch, him and his wife. And it's not the same thing that I experienced. We're dealing with two several different things here. So, so uh, when you go out west and we see the complexity that's the hidden in plain sight, it seems like, like the only people that recognize what's really going on are people like yourself. And Don and people that are, that are privately going out there and researching. Some people have a little bit of historical background and an understanding of some of the culture of the past. You know, anthropologists seem to understand what's really going on, but they're hiding it. Well, it's the very it's the very same uh, uh, modus operandi that you reduce them to something less than a human, and then you have your way with them. Uh, and that's, you know, the, the, the Sasquatch, what do they say a Sasquatch is? Well, they, they try to convince people it's an ape. That's an ape. Less right. than a human. And so they need to kill one to get a body, right? Which is, just, yeah, it's a justification for right. eliminating, right? It's a rationalization. If you kill a hundred of them, there's no law against killing apes in North America. If you get it established that it's an ape. Uh, you, so you, you, you see what I'm talking about now. Now, I, I, I don't pretend that I know the full nature of a Sasquatch, but I, well, I know that it, it's got all the same tools that we do. Right. And how many people have said that they've described it as human like? Yeah. Well, yeah, that would need to be studied in some way, you know, with some kind of a, a process that would be, uh, you know, slam dunk, it, is, it would establish for, for sure. Uh, but, but I'm gonna I'm, let me just show this. I'll share this right here. Hold on. Uh -oh. Am I in your way? Do I am I blocking it? Do I have to? No, no, I'm good. I just didn't see it. If my image, if you have a problem getting it up, I'll let me I'll remove mine because I'm not sure it's seen right. it. That should Which is an good. interesting uh, hieroglyph or carving into the rocks there that looks like a sun. Now I have to find my uh, my uh, file I had. I had it running. There it is. Okay, we'll get you going. And then, oh, I think I what I need is stop, stop my screen. I think that will help. Can you see it? Uh, what you need to do, uh, I'm not, can you guys see that? Tell me if you can see that image because I can see it. Yeah, I can see it. So, yeah, do you guys see this video, of Julio or uh, Sheldon? Just give me a confirmation. Magic can do many mysterious things. Well, let me know if you can see the vi the video that just posted. I see it. Okay, good. All right. What what mm -hmm. is it? What do you think it is? I mean, what what is how does it strike you? Well, if for, you know the you start out with at least for me, I'm just gonna speak for myself. A guy in a suit until. Someone like you starts pointing out the the intricacy, the, the details and the intricacies, intricacies of the uh, what's going on here. Um, with, with, and, uh, then, and then it looks, it looks relatively um, human-like. <laughs> well, it's got it's got uh, 
the, the hair. Yeah, it's got, like a super it's hairy got a humanoid it's, type person. Yeah, it, it doesn't really have that much hair. You see it's got a light colored skin beneath the hair. Uh, it, it really is. It's got it's kind of haired over. You know, not not a lot like fur. Uh, there's hairy people. I'm going to see if I can find a picture of one. I had one. I, 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 you know what it reminds me of goat hair. Well, uh, it's it's In a, a fine it's a fine hair. Yeah, uh, and, and it's different on different parts of the body, like like our hair is. Uh, let me let me find an example here. But it's you know it's walking very human like, but it's not a human. And I understand why people would first glance say, oh that has to be a big guy in a suit. I wouldn't say that it's not him, and I say that it's not us. Well, I'm, what I'm saying is is not very modern man. No, it's very human like is what I'm saying. And so I can say that because it's very human like, I can see how people at first glance, without putting the effort and time in, would say, Oh, that's a guy in a suit. But the more you put time into it, you're like, um, yeah, there are uh, something that's very is it's it's animal and human like. That's walking in the woods. That's physical. I have. I mean, you have already demonstrated. There's there's no reason for you to exaggerate or lie about it. If over, you said that twelve people have tried to claim to be the person in the suit. At least a dozen. Is that correct, MK? Uh, yeah, quite a number of them. So if right there alone, pretty much discredits all of them for. You know, there's no you can't take any of it seriously, no matter who they are and who how much they might know, uh, Patterson and or Gilman or whoever. Um, because if you got at least 12 people claiming to be the person in the suit, which I don't understand why anybody would want to do that, honestly. I mean, even if it's for a buck. Or for attention, it's like it's always you know it's going to backfire on you. So why is this happening? All right, can you see what I, what I've got up now? Yeah, can you magnify it? There you go. Yeah. yeah. Zoom in. So there's a head. There's there's sure her. Of a there's the raw. Tail. It's the raw image on the left, and that's the filter. And you can see this. She's got arranged hair that's tied back there, which is very human like. It's not animal like. There's just you no know, it, way. To... It's a uh, it, it that. I'm, that is what I'm saying is different from us, maybe to some respects, but not less than us, uh, or of less value. Yeah, less value. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, they have their own way of living, uh, but they're they're comfortable doing it. You know, you don't you don't try to exterminate. Well, they seem like the people that actually if there's there's the common theory, and it's very rational to think this, that they are the original uh, or a type of original people of this place that we, you and I live in. We stick out like a sore thumb. They seem to be able to live in the environment that's, you know, nature, the outdoors. We, for the most part, without shelter, without some help and assistance, we stick out like a sore thumb like we have been genetically engineered or that we uh, don't belong here in the first place. Does that make sense? I mean, you know what I'm talking about. Everybody knows what I'm talking about. Yeah, I just yeah. think that the, the, the things that we now know are wrong and we they, we pass laws to prohibit that we used to do cannot just be taken back up again. You know, uh, so you, you're going to have to figure this one out this that the the man in a suit thing is not it's not working the film's too good uh so could you imagine you. if that was a guy in a suit what a miserable day it was he could he could he could pull that off i can tell you that <laughs> I've, I would be grimacing and have a have a pissed look on my face too if i was a dude in a suit doing that just imagine how um uh, yeah, you would have to be a massive. I mean, I've seen and you've all we've all seen a big guy. There's some big guys out there, real big guys. But to be that big and to be and to to 
be able to pull off the details. I mean, you would have to practice that in an immense amount of times to get pull it off. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, take a look at this. Yeah, look. I mean, look at the boot. I mean, just, <laughs> uh, uh, that, that, that is that the closest to the, the true color of the, the hair? Uh, and no, all? and no, it's probably not. Uh, what I did was to uh, to to drive the color of the hair and the color of the skin apart from one another where you could tell which one was which uh and, and and there this is probably brighter um a little more on the yellow side but she does have light colored skin uh the hair the hair color is probably accurate we more like a white to gray area uh, yeah the, it needs to the skin could probably go down a few tones but but there there more fleshy like human color skin uh by well, the it's, pinkness, or? it's it's uh it's going to be color of a native american about okay. that color you know uh that's what been outdoors mean, the size of that head there's just no way that he, I mean, more you look at that i mean i've seen some dudes with big heads i mean it's, the it's, size of that head is so big i got a feeling that uh I mean, if she wanted to take a bite on you, she could take a big chunk out of you. And you, you know what I mean? Uh, if she, if that were the case, but that, yeah. you know, that, that doesn't appear to be on her mind. Uh, it's, it's like, you know, you just, you're going, they're going to have to live with this film. I know they tried uh, way. I mean, I tried myself starting out trying to disprove it. At least I was honest and come to terms with the fact that I couldn't disprove it. <laughs> so um but it seems like they went way out of the way to alter it and distort it and i understand about copyright issues and trying oh, to take and, money and off every, it. every way in the book to this to wipe this film off the face of the earth uh but, but there's like such an agenda and, and i can see part of the logic would be okay if these things are human-like then i can see why they're and we've had this this conversation has been spoken a thousand upon thousands of times but we're going to go over it again so there could possibly that they're worried about these things being human-like and they try to have reserves or areas reserved to to them right and they're you know they're trying maybe seriously to protect them but i don't see that in the end i i see um i i don't know what protecting means i i just think that a Education should be sufficient. Uh, if just show them this film and say, "Look, you know, there's there's somebody living out there that we don't know everything there is to know about them, but they're out there. Don't mess with them. You know, um, it's it's they they seem to do okay. Look at this right here." It You'll reminds see. me of a combination between the story of uh, Cain and Esau. Like the subtly, allegorically, they are bringing it up that we've been dealing with this for thousands of years. And for some reason, I, I think, well, part of the logical thing, why to kind of keep this a hush and hop, knowing how human beings are, I think there's a whole bunch of yahoos that would go out there and, and wipe them all out. Just for the just for the sport of it, just for the game of it. Well, I mean, there are people who uh, down here in the South, especially, and I know have a lot of friends uh, that that believe that they can get a body and get it proven. But the, the 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 question is, is it the same thing you see on this film? That's a good you know, question. Uh, what what know. they say they see does appear like an animal. You know, gets down on all fours and runs, and you know that sort of thing. You know, uh, so but I can't see Patty doing that same thing. Well, I couldn't either. It may be just apples and oranges. Uh, I tell you what, a trained hunter would never, never put a gun on her unless they were unless he was willing to do a crime, because he would look at her if he got a good look. And he, it would go against everything that their daddy taught them on hunting. You know, you you don't shoot something you're unsure of. You don't shoot something that uh, 
that you, you even think might be a human. You know, uh, it, she has nothing to worry about. Uh, it's it's people who have a monetary. Could you could you blow up that image more? Could you fill it up? A monetary. A monetary. What I'm going to do. What I'm going to do. See if I can get. Let's see. Nope. It, you can see that she's got a little braid. It's the wind is taking it over her ear, and it's laying down on her, on her cheek, and her ear is exposed for a frame or two. The wind just blew it like this. Oh, that's weird. I see what's going on. You got what is going on here? That's the raw image. You see, you can see it on the raw image. Yeah, I can see it. I'm trying to figure out. You see the image that's going on. How come there? I can see a double image of you and I. A double image? I don't know. That's what I'm trying to figure this out because I want us to focus on this image. I really want us to focus on this image. Yeah. Well, forget about that. I want, to, I want people to have a better look at that. I the ear and the uh and that, but I'm for some reason, um, yeah, for some reason, you got that. It's like tripling, double. Yeah, can you blow that one up? Expand yeah. it. And Pretty big like, right now. Okay, so this thing has a, it has teeth, it has an. Well, that traditional, or I've heard numerous times about their ears are different than ours. They're kind of a weird looking ear. It's a little bit. I'd say it has. You'll 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 find X number of people that have an ear like that. You know, there's all kinds of different styles on the ear. Uh, that may be a better word rather than to say this is another race of human. It may be it's better to call it another style. Uh, uh, it's just it's it's more suited for living a type like in the mountains, uh, you know, in those cold places. And it uh, it's it's just the way it, it. We don't know half of it. You know, we've only got this is the best we have, and it's six, can, can we let's see the, the the blow up image now? The one on the other side. Because it's cut off. Okay. So we see it better. So what's going around the mouth there? Can people tell us what's going on there? It's got kind of a little snarl on it. You know, a little closed mouth. It's looking back at them. Uh, it, it, it looks a little yep. bit beat lips up, too. Tight. Lips are tight. Are we looking at a tongue as well? I don't think so. Okay, all right. Uh, I, this is a closed lip right here. It's got a little bit of, kind of looks like a cleft right there, but I don't know if that's the case or not. Hmm. Don't, don't, they, nobody has a right to go and hunt these things <laughs> with horses and dogs. It's, it's not open season on them. But that's and, exactly what happened that day. Yeah, it was exactly what happened. So and, let's uh, go over a little bit about, if you're willing to, I mean, it's up to you. You don't have to go deep if you don't want. I, I respect your limit on this. So. Yeah, well, I mean, I'm not, I'm not trying to stir anybody up or anything. And, I, and, and I'm, not, I'm not, every time I go to talk somewhere, I'm not going to bring this up. You know, it's, uh, I, I, I mostly promote the film as authentic. And well, that, uh, that's and, a, that's for, it's pretty much a well established. The thing yeah. the questions arise uh, A, how did they make it happen? And B, what happened after the fact? I mean, I'm hearing all sorts of different stories. Well, there's a lot of you know, you can do a lot of damage if you got a good, really good dog and, and a group of people that are will more than willing to, to pull a trigger. Uh, so, you know, these things aren't exactly, you know, speed demons. Uh, a dog can outrun one. Especially the, 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 the paddy type, right? Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Now, the, the ones that's down here, 
you know, I, you have to you have to let people be their own their own judges. You you can prepare them. You can say, well, I, I kind of don't I don't think that this one that the ones here in the south are living in the swamps are quite what that one is up in the mountains, you know. But if you see one, you know, what did your daddy tell you? You know, did he, when he trained you to hunt. Did he, did he tell you just throw the, throw the gun up and shoot and then go over and see what you shot? <laughs> no, uh, they, tell, they tell you to know what you're shooting at and what you're aiming at before you pull it. Everybody through. I know that's pro-kill, I have all the confidence in the world that they would never pull the trigger on that, that old girl right there. Uh, because you, it's obvious, you know, that, that, that just at least you can question whether it's a human or not. Uh, I don't know, you know, what else you can call it. Uh, it, it displays intelligence and it ties its own hair up, you know? <laughs> it's right. Got it's got a braid. It's, it's carrying something. It's carrying something. It's carrying something. Left hand, left hand there. It, that's, a, that's kind of a good clue right there. But, you know, there are greedy people who will shoot you and me, you know, if, if they can get wealthy off of it. Right. And here's the other thing, too. It, it seems to me, I mean, you mentioned some a little bit that there were multiple parties that could possibly be been involved in this from at least two different countries. Well, and possibly, and I'm not saying this was this was not, but it was also kind of leads to the suggestion that there's possibly two different governments involved and other. I mean, and how did Hollywood actually, you know, how did it end up on the movie theater? And how did the government not? Why did it not stop it? That's a good question. Well, it 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 they had this fantastic film worth lots of money but they could not market it in, in its original form because it showed way too much. Uh, so they edited it. They very carefully edited it where they tried to make it look like it was continuously running from the beginning to the end. But it's very clear that it wasn't. It, it's been spliced. Uh, so they edited the part out that that was they figure would be the most incriminating part. And uh, I'll be honest with you, I in a court of law, I don't know that they would get in trouble. You know, because there's certain things, criteria that has to be met. It, it, there's no one missing. There's no, you know, no paper trail, no one to... No one's gone to the authorities and said, I'm missing one. Uh, and then it's, it's, you could argue that I didn't kill a human, you know? Uh, so you might get off, you know, lock, stock and barrel. Uh, but that morally speaking, morally speaking, uh, you know, you're doing the same thing that they did to Native Americans, all those people got off lock, stock, and barrel with the laws of that day. Uh, you know, but they they did they broke every kind of moral law there was to break. So it's it's the same basic thing happening. The the law don't quite cover this, and you people get away with things. Uh yeah, so, um, there's a there's a few places that will punish you for shooting a Sasquatch. Or counties up there in Washington State, they will punish you for it, but it's you're not going to, you know, death row or anything. Uh, they don't, you know, they don't know what they are. It has has not been established. You can't get a scientist to 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 admit. That they're real. They can't even get past that. <laughs> so how can you kill something that's not real? 
Well, that's uh, it, very convenient to create the situation so that people uh, are constantly in doubt. Well, especially if there's um, well, there's some kind of threat to their own authority and power. They being, and when I say they, all roads to me lead to the Vatican and to the monarchies of the Western Europe and Eurasia. So to this, I still, from my impression, there is still. Um, are the major landowners even in, in the Americas? You know what I mean. They're still going to have the final say in a lot of things, and a lot of our taxes still go back to the British Crown and to uh, the Vatican, whether people want to hear that or not. And I'm not being bigoted. I'm just telling you how it is. This is well established. And so, why? So obviously, this is a threat, not just because of land, and not just because of farming or raising cattle or whatever um it's not even just, I, it's just it seems to me that we've gone batshit crazy that's what it seems. <laughs> i think we just lost our bearings completely and we just anything that is even close to being a threat we just wipe the damn thing out if we can that, it, that's uh Whenever the gold was found, first found, 1840s in California, the, all those Native Americans became dispensable. So, yeah, if so, if we know that something that's clear, uh, uh, fellow humans can be treated that way, then there's no reason to think otherwise that the same thing was not going on. And this now goes back. Okay, so we got from all the way from the Northwest Coast these. These totems and all these the um, symbology of this, you know, the wild man, Bigfoot, Sasquatch, and it goes all the way to um, Lovelock Cave. And to me, it seems like you and others have been established a pretty clear connection between it all. Is there a possibility that what was going on in that bones that that woman saw in 1980s was actually a Sasquatch. Well, that I, mean, I don't know. I mean, is there? I'm not saying you do know, but I'm just saying, is there a possibility? That's a completely different thing. Because uh, it seems, I mean, we're talking about huge skull, larger than life human beings, right? Then, that, or and it's, at least the skulls appear that way, right? Because we don't really know what's on top of, for the for most part. We don't know what, what's on top of those skulls, right? There might have been some hair and all that, but we don't know exactly what these things look like. We just, or do we? And if we do, what, what makes us think that uh, they could be anything different than what was filmed that day called Patty? You mentioned that it uh, almost had a reddish uh, or kind of tint to the hair. What if it's it, these things are when they're more in the desert at sun, you know, the, the beating of the sun that they, they becomes more uh, orange, red, blondish, whatever. You know what I mean? I'm sure their hair changes a little bit, just like anything else does. So there's been there's been white ones. It's what I was looking for right here. And so we, I mean, it's, it's, to me, it seems very clear. I mean, what you've done is you, to me, you painted a, the, there's, there seems to be strong oh, connections with all this. I lost it. Let me find it again. Here it is. I want to, I want to read this to you. Can I do that? Yes. You, you, you're here to teach us. I'm just okay. <laughs> this, this is what Native Americans believe that live in the area, have always lived in the area. They were never removed to any reservation. They have always lived in the that, uh, in that valley. Okay, now, there, there's three, three tribes, and they all have the same belief. Uh, one's the Hoopas, one's the Yurok, and the other is Karuk. Okay, I'm going to read it. The Siskiyou Mountains are a small range in northwest California and southwest Oregon. In the southern part, they contain parts of the Klamath and Smith River watersheds. These watersheds are the traditional homelands of several Native American tribes, including the Yurok, 
Karuk, and they call it the Talawa. That's that's the Hoopa tribes of Northern California. These tribes have considered the high country to be of a special spiritual importance since times predating recorded history. Two of the rocks at the peaks of the high country are now called Dr. Rock and Chimney Rock. And Dr. Rocks is sometimes referred to as Medicine Rock. At about 4,000 feet, this region is this region is held to be the center of the spiritual universe because it is believed that the original inhabitants of the world who left just as the humans appeared here the high country is the site of, of a climb let's see I got I've skipped too far climbed they climbed up through holes in the sky and these high peaks peaks are the last places they set foot on earth, hence the high concentration of spiritual powers here. The high country is a site of ritual of a ritual performed individually and involving days of fasting and meditation to obtain spiritual purity amidst the silence and undisturbed serenity. The few members of these tribes who feel the call to become medicine people derive their powers during these rites. The medicine people are spiritual leaders and are an integral part of the culture. Although few individuals ever enter into these areas, they are of incalculable value to the entire society. So they say that there was a, they were just prior to modern man, they were the original inhabitants there. And they left and climbed up through holes in the sky from off those peaks. Which you could take that numerous ways from some people claim it's UFO, some kind of, some people well, say I just portal. take it like, it like they wrote it. Uh, or there literally is a hole in the sky, right? An opening? Well, uh, well, I mean, I don't know what that hole in the sky was. I, mean, I, I just have to say I don't know. Uh uh, I, maybe it can be better explained, but I, I don't know what the hole in the sky is. I just take it as it was written. I was very surprised when I came across that because that area is where the Sasquatch are living. Maybe that's who they're referring to. Maybe there was still some there. Uh, I don't know what a hole in the sky amounts to. It could be a portal or it can be, a, you know, UFO or I don't know. Because it'd be, although I, I wonder if they're all the, I wonder if most of it is actually the same thing. Um, whether we call it a portal or an orb or a flying out. There's something, a rip in time, spiritually, I don't know. Either Nobody right. knows. But here's the thing. Uh, they, it, they, they, believe, they believe it so much that they form human chains to block, block, equipment from coming in there well that's here's the thing when you said they believe what if they actually knew but we're interpreting as they believe they actually well, knew I mean, I, when i say belief i mean that is that is what the way they see things you know uh they they have more to go on than i do uh I, all i have is that piece that little write-up uh, but they, the, those, those shamans, listen, I've been in the Laos camp camping and I heard those shamans. They were mm -hmm. up there tra training. Okay. They, they were chanting. They were chanting. Yes. So I, I know that I to mean, be. I, gosh darn, you know, MK, everything we, we talk about stuff, it always goes back to something spiritual. I mean, I mean, I'm being honest about it. now. You're telling you, they're out there chanting, that, you know, you know the, the, you know, the, the priests there in the Vatican, they're chanting in their little, in their little places, right? Their, their prayers and their, in the, the, their spiritual formation and their forty days and their, whatever symbolically in the tra cave to the, to the, the Tibetan monks talk about the same thing. I mean, you, there's, 
to all these shamans, there is something, whether we like it or not, it's spiritual in all of us. It's a spiritual side to it. Uh, and, and, and it's mm. almost, uh, almost, you know, we have a, we, we do, we hunger for that spiritual side. If we don't have it, we kind of have a little void, uh, and we try to fill it with something, uh, whether it be, uh, uh, going to church every Sunday or whether it's it going, going into out on nature walks or, or try to fill it with something that's on the spiritual side. Because we we have that element about us all. Uh, even even atheists have a spiritual side. They just they don't agree with who, who is the the ultimate spiritual person, but they they recognize the spiritual side. Uh, yeah. Please. So, uh, what what? It makes them those those two peaks so important that they would stand in front of equipment. And you said two peaks, or twin peaks, which is yeah. There, there, there are two rocks on two little promontories up there. Uh, one is Medicine Rock or Doctor Rock, and the other is Chimney Rock. Do you have an image of that? Uh, I I used to. Let's, let's see if I can find it. Again, I don't know if it's a good idea to share it or not. If somebody tends to get motivated, go over there and spray graffiti on it or something. I mean, it is no low. Here's that. That's what. That's another thing too about keeping. Be hard pressed to go up there. I've got a picture of, of me on a boulder. That fell. That's the go road. Well, that's good. That's what. That's that's what happens during the off season. It's only open for a couple of months out of the year. Let me try to find this uh, chimney rock here. I'm going to go back to the, another hard drive. While oh, you're doing that, we'll go do this. Get that back until you find it. Let's see here. Yeah. The thing is, is it's so it's, it's a lot more it's so it much more complicated than uh, that people the it, that's chimney rock. You can blow that up for us so we can see it better. It's got a, you see it's got a charcoal. Okay. It's got a fire on it. That's the one, and, and do you have both of them, or is that just one? Uh, I, I I have probably have the other, and I'm gonna see if I can find it. That's one heck of a view, isn't it? Oh, yeah, it's up at 4,000 feet. I was somewhere down here. I could hear him chanting. Though. It was carry, carrying down, the, down through the valley. Let me see what this is right quick. I don't know how to keep up with you guys. So if I, if I miss some of you guys' comments posting it up there, I apologize. Because uh, when you hang out with MK, you start thinking. If you slow down, you start thinking. He starts making you think. <laughs> Which, you know, it's it's a wonderful thing to have this opportunity because it's I don't know how many more scary stories I can take so I want to know the truth about some of this all right let's see here and west is so vast too we think about how huge California is Nevada all the way up into Washington in Mallard British Columbia we're talking about a huge area there's something Mr. Mister, uh, mysterious about it too. It's almost like a place where East and West truly meets. If you think about it, it even the Russians were there before us, and uh, and the Spaniards, of course. Maybe I may get luckier finding it on the internet. Uh, let me see. There may be a picture. 
He does. Um, this, had, we're, we're fortunate I to have to him get, here. I had to get off this. I believe. No, I wouldn't. I can get an, an extra window up right here. Oh, it's back behind. Let's see. There it is. I'm not. Uh, I'm not really uh, that used to the to the uh, the module, and I'm learning it. Let's see. Let's see. Well, I can while you're figuring it out, I'll share. A um, well, I don't. I just when you're figuring it out, just go like this. Okay, to you, Um Yeah, uh, it's. I find the West fascinating. I and I honest, I'm probably wrong in certain degrees. Maybe maybe the whole thing, but it seems like what's going on, uh, what did go on, in the areas of Nevada, Arizona, the Four Corners. Utah, all the way up to the West Coast, the British Columbia, they had a, just a different, it's almost like, okay, there was the the Mississippi River that divided the East and the West, but then there was the Rocky Mountains that divided the West, from the West West, from the, you know, the, the Desert Plains and everything, and I think that what was going on then, uh, and if you also tie in cataclysmic events, and the theory and you look at what was going on in um, Nevada. What was Nevada a thousand years ago, two thousand years ago? And do things change that drastically and that fast uh, environmentally? Um, because I mean, you guys are fine, you know. Or uh, so you find footprints outside of Lovelock Cave, and Footprints could last a long time. How old are those footprints? Oh, that's in Oklahoma. I, I, I haven't found it. Uh, there, there. I don't know where a picture is for Medicine Peak. I'll tell you what. I'll start sharing some images while you figure that out. Because some from you, um, and when you figure it out, you figure it out. In the meantime, there's images to be shown. Because I mean. What's going on out west was pretty bizarre. I mean, we talk about around um, Lovela Cave, uh, Pyramid, is that what it's called? Pyramid Lake? Is that what it's called? Yeah. And it, it just like it looks pretty clear that there actually was, uh, well, it could have been a pyramid at one time there that has been weathered away. I mean, it could be just happenstance. Um, could be happenstance. It could be. Uh, <laughs> but, you know, it's hard to form a pyramid, you know, with equal sides and everything. Uh, and for each one of those sides to bend at the same place, you know, it's it's a, it's like the bent pyramid in Egypt. You know, it goes, it goes steeper and then and it goes... Not so steep, and then turn steep. Right, this is a lot of strange. Devil's Tower is a very strange anomaly as well. You don't see too many of those things. It's quite reasonable for people to ask some um, questions that maybe some people think are. Yeah, it's it's I it's I don't have one of uh, of of Medicine Peak. It's 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 the next one over from this one. Uh, it's it's hard to find these pictures. Okay, I'll uh, let you share this. They don't, again. they don't go up there to take pictures. I'll stop. Stop screen. He had the screen. There we go. They'll be, they'll they'll be up here. For, for 30 or 40 days. They'll try to get it. They'll, they'll try to get become an, in, in a, like an emaciated condition. And then that, that kind of opens up the spiritual doors and then they try to have a vision. Well, you know, um, it's been proven it's, that that's exactly what will happen with sleep uh, uh, sleep depression, 
I'm not saying the word right. Help me out here, Kim K. To be deprived of sleep. Yeah, is, deprivation. <laughs> deprivation. So sleep deprivation, uh, food deprivation, water deprivation, a combination will cause you to, they say hallucinate, but um, it doesn't necessarily mean that there's not something externally or internally happening that is not part of the supernatural. It's not part of the spiritual realm, you know. There's a reason why people have done this, not just a culture, but all cultures for thousands of years. This is time immemorial, right? There's a reason why they go through this stuff because they want to have that certain experience, right? And if, yeah. if, the, yeah. ar if the archetypes are universal, then that might mean that there's actually something that's beyond simply uh, biochemical. You know, well, right? it's, 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 there's earth energies that are involved. A trained shaman can feel earth energies. Uh, when they build their mounds over here in the, in the mound building areas of the country, when they did build their mounds, they would look for one of those places where they felt the energy coming out of the earth or either from uh, like a, where two rivers meet, confluence, or sharp bend in a river, All right. uh, that, that ions would flow. And they would, they, that aids them in having a vision. They would build the mound, and then the shaman would go up on the mound, and he would either take a drug, but not necessarily. The drug helped, but you didn't have to have, have to have the drug. No. Uh, they, they would beat a drum at a certain frequency, and they would eventually go into this, this, uh, it's like a trance, and then they would have a vision, and when they had the vision, they would get guidance, and that's what the whole thing was about, getting guidance uh, from the spiritual world. And let's be honest about this, too. I mean, these people are much more pragmatic than us today. They don't, you know, we have a much more convenient life, obviously, than they did. Uh, uh, you know, the, their lives were more about a day-to-day -day survival. I have a hard time believing that they would simply just do this because they had nothing else better to do. No, no, not at all. Uh, yeah. they, they, go, they build that mound on a spiritual place. It's a flow of ions. Uh, the, the Great Serpent Mound up there in Ohio was built on the, the, that very edge of an uh, ancient meteorite crater. And could you imagine the stressed stone under the ground that, 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 you know, when you, some, some rocks are piezoelectric, you stress them and they'll produce electricity. And if they got, if there's crystals down there or quartz or granite that has quartz in it, that, like that, you stress it, the, the ions flow and they can feel it. Yeah, you can, you can feel the ions flow around here where the uh, there's two rivers meet. They go just like this, and there's three Indian mounds built there. They didn't stop with just one. Well, you guys have like, the second largest one in the in North America, don't you? Yeah, yeah. The Emerald Mound is it's eight acres on top. I think that's we should we should do a show on mounds and talk about that in particular. Yeah. Well, a down the road for me is Newark. The mound's there, right? Do what? Yeah, Newark. The mound's in Newark, Ohio, which is what you know you're, you're known. Yeah, uh, yeah. Ohio yeah. is full of mounds. Uh, Indiana's another one that's full of mounds. That's true. It's just it's just an artificial lined border that we created, right? So it's all the same area. Yeah, um, right, right. It's all the same area. You're right. But they, it's the Mississippi and Ohio valleys. You know, they fork and then come to one and go down. Um, and, and the Mississippi, the Mississippi is a, in itself produces electricity. Uh, it, when it goes around those sharp bends and oxbows and uh -huh. uh, also when it gets down to the lower end, uh, it's so deep that the bottom reaches sea level before the top. And so it begins a really peculiar type of tumbling current. 
that really produces electricity. And these tribes that are like the Natchez that are so spiritual, man, that they, 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 they came from the Pacific Northwest to be there. Uh, they were they originated from the Pacific Northwest. Uh, your history books won't tell you that, but they told you, they, they said it. Uh, and if you, I, I remember reading about Chief Winnemucca in, you know, in Northern Nevada, they named it a town after him, Winnemucca, Nevada. Uh -huh. His son was named Natchez. Huh. Huh. Well, how far, yeah. how far is that from the Mississippi river? Yeah. Uh, so yeah, there's a lot that we don't know. And th those mounds are everything. I mean, they would, they would, they would, uh, they're willing to die for those mounds. And they say there's a lot of supernatural stuff that happens. Uh, it, um, it is, it is around it, you know. Um, it, it affects people certain ways, so people that are sensitive to it, and 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 then there's the physical manifestations. You know, you get so occasionally you get sparks uh, or, or little flashing lights. Uh, there, there's a but if you go to a YouTube and look up Bynum Mounds, it's on the Natchez Trace, and somebody actually recorded on video the, the lights blinking and sparking on top of those mounds. It, I it, wondered. They didn't hoax it, then they did. In this series that we're doing, and I hope it continues, okay, I wonder if we can get a couple characters in here, like L.A. Marzulli. I bet you I could probably finagle that. And how about uh, Fritz Zimmerman? He did that the book on the the mounds in, the, in uh -huh. Indiana and uh, Ohio. Uh, I think that would be very interesting to have you two or to have the exchange. Um, you have much more. You're much more studied in this than I am. I've, uh, and uh, I think that would be very interesting. And if you're interested in that, I'll we'll reach out to them and see if they will join us. But it, it, I think it would. You know, we've had in the past. There was a couple shows we did with other people. I think we did one with Duke. And I just let you guys roll, and um, if you're game for that, I'll try to make it happen. Well, I'm game for it. Okay. Those people work hard at what they do. They do. And this thing is about with, like, I just watched a thing with uh, what L.A. did about talking about Newark and the uh, Serpent Mountains. And in particular, there was a lot of high strangeness going on in um, Newark. And these circle mounds, these rings, like you see, and these these structures like the Stonehenge. America has, uh, there's, okay, most people have been calling America Stonehenge um, the Georgia Guidestones, which is not true. It's a mis we actually do have an American Stonehenge. It's yeah, not really I've, I've seen it. And no, so, I haven't been there, but I've seen it on television. And there seems to be some kind of alignment with these these circular structures are, are um i don't know what's the proper name for them uh oh. i don't know you know there was like the, the 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 circles within circles within circles like there's one actually just out like 47 miles from mount herman that somehow lines up with stonehenge in england and then somehow the american stonehenge oh they, oh they get on the what is that ley lines uh, they say yeah, I'm not, yeah, but I'm not 100 percent sure if it actually is ley lines, or, or, or maybe just parallels. Uh, there's a lot of them be built on a certain parallel. Uh, right. Yeah, I think it's the 33rd parallel or something like that. Uh, I've read some on it, but I, I'm no expert on it. Yeah, and so it makes you wonder what a lot of these symbols that we're finding in carvings and. Um, Uh, you know what? What are they really trying to say <laughs> at times? And yeah, why, was, why did they go well, through so much trouble? Yeah. You know? and, well, and here's the thing too. Just because we see the the mounds, what was on? What was in between them? What was on it? Was there nothing on it at all? How do we know there was nothing on it? Does that make well, sense? Uh, 
uh, the, the, the mounds uh, around here, we have a real huge mound uh, out at Holly Bluff, Mississippi. And the Peabody Museum came and excavated, and they found the post holes for a structure up on top of the mound. Uh, and they, they, uh, they, they, they produced a book on that mound on their excavations. And uh, they published all the photographs they took. And you can see, you know, the post holes. They just filled in, but they were still there. And, and, they, and they just filled in with dust, you know, over many years. And uh, you, they were easily cleaned out. It, it, the, wood was, the wood was rotted. Oh, look at that. You see that? You see the Jupiter? <laughs> um, makes you wonder, what, what is this that you film? Is this the sun for real, or what do you think of uh, that? I, I don't think so. Uh, I, I think it's a symbol for God, myself. Now, it, it, sometimes they show you know, uh, the force, you know, the, the uh, power of God by showing rays. Uh a circle typically it means God. A circle with a dot in the middle, you know, there's several varieties. A circle with a smaller, small circle in the center means God. So and that means kind of God, means, for the creators, but you know, then it, it means oh, Ra. Shores. It, it means Ra. Ra in Egypt, Ra, I guess, which is God. Which is where we're, which is what image I'm trying to catch up with this. They one. they actually phonetically use that in, in in words. That's what gets me. It's it's a dual purpose uh, language. You can see was uh, the one you had Ramsey's on. Look, uh, Ra is the circle with a dot in the middle. Okay, that's the first two letters of Ramsey's. That one with the three coming down. Oh, there it is. It, it means. Mise, M M I S E. This is the yellow one right here. Right here. Yeah, that's this one right here, and this one right here is a folded, considered to be a folded blanket. It's a, it's got a crook on it, a fold like that right there well, on right. the bottom. Oh, excuse me. Uh, and it's just the letter S. It makes the S sound. So Sorry. you got Ram Mises. Or Ramsey's Ramsey. sun god, yeah. Ramsey, or that we had some kind of obviously a more you know they talk about Atlantis, something similar to that. This this is a this is a hieroglyph that you know hieroglyphs. I've I've taken hieroglyphs that I have studied uh, in a book on the lost continent of Mu by James Churchward. And I could read hieroglyphs on rocks in the Southwest, and I knew what they were saying. So there's there's connections. Where, how close is this image to, or is this even part of that area? Uh, that's in the Southwest, I think, but I, I don't know that I can read that one. I know that that's a heron. This right here is a heron, the bird. Right, left the big one with the feathers coming down. Uh, it, it probably says something like Atlan, Atlan, uh, Atlanta, is, Atlanta, uh, Atlanta. <laughs> Atlan is where the uh, the Aztecs came from. Uh, and it was uh, it's, it's called the land of the the land of the heron, the white heron. That's what Atlan means. So where would that? And that was in the Southwest. That's in the, the Southwest. Yeah. The, is, that, there, is there anything like that today? The, I mean, that, as far as the land of the white herons, I and mean, is there a? Uh, well, area? yeah. There, there's, there's, uh, there's the the Aztecs were pretty uh, cover a broad area, all the way, all the way up to nearly to Canada. And then down into Mexico, uh, and the, the matter of fact, the language that was spoken up through there was called Uto Uto Aztecan language, uh, and they all can kind of 
correspond with one another. They may not be exactly alike, but they're close enough that they can talk. All those people that speak that are in that language group. Used to Uto Aztecan. I, I have one that you can read. So there's there's pyramid lake. There's a pyramid. There's all these hieroglyphs. There's they suggest there, you know was the, was talking about Ramsey in the West, and it seems to me whatever was the West, it was much more of of a beautiful, flourishing. But so some it had a lakes, it had uh, fauna, wildlife, and all of a sudden, like overnight, it turned into a freaking desert. Well, that and I don't know, I, I don't know how fast it took them, but uh, it, one time it was well watered. There were eighty basins uh, in Nevada and uh, down into uh, uh, Arizona and New Mexico. They were all full of water. And they connected with the Pacific. Well, let's, if we found bones, if I like these hieroglyphs, we found certain structures throughout the West, especially the Southwest. Um, and this goes back to this cataclysmic events that happened, like with the theory being that when it does happen, it's not progressive. It happens in a moment, like a polar shift. It happens within a day type of thing, right? One moment, the North Pole is, you know, in another part, you know, of, of the globe, right? Where today we don't, where it is, all of a sudden it will be in the middle of Africa. Just like that kind of, that's the argument that they say. I don't know if it's true or not, but they're also to say there's a lot of uh, geological evidence to support that whole idea, right? That they have these, these uh, extremely fast, Cataclysmic events, and I don't know. Is something, you know, there's so much mystery. Just history, just going 500 years. Heck, just going 300 years, going 200 years, especially in the Americas. You know what I mean? What did happen? Did something major happen around 700 years ago? I mean, how did one moment? The Mayas, they have this great empire, and the next moment is no longer there anymore. They just walk away from it all. And then they have these traditions about saying that uh, we didn't build these things. There was somebody else, something else built these mounds and built these structures. Many of the Native Americans, I know there's one that lives close to me. He's you know, argue, argues with the, there's a lot of uh, conversations to, presentations about this the server mountain in ohio and he swears that that they the native of or indigenous population they had zero to do with it zero so So it's you know and it's a big issue. It's 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 um uh, it's an important issue. It's trying to work this stuff out. It's such it's, it's the challenge without sounding like uh like you're just making up stuff or just uh going with the latest uh fad. But you know it's so it's allegedly they didn't. They, many of the indigenous uh, people in America said they did not build these structures. They did not build these mounds. Something else, somebody else did. Then we're seeing the thing about Sasquatch, and we think about Patty, and these big things that are almost human-like, or very human-like in nature. And it's it's only natural to, to go over there and say, is there a correlation between all this? And Fritz does a pretty good job of kind of putting some of the dots together as far as traditional, but still, how did this all just, you know, just disappear overnight? You know, uh, of course, it's not literally, but but in, as far as time goes, a generation is overnight. I mean, it's like a second. 
how can a generation two just all this history and everything just disappear unless there was something that's much more than just even the, the Smithsonian Institute. It's almost like there was a collective agreement by the oligarchs and the plutocracy, the ruling elite to just bury an awful lot of the truth. Especially what was going on in North America. And people forget that, that North America, that, that, that the Indian Wars didn't even, only ended a, a century ago, about 100 years ago. And I'm still looking for that uh, that hieroglyph that I was going to show you, how, how you could read it. But I can't find the right one on short notice. That's all right. Probably about time to wind down for this ses session anyway. Yeah. It's been about two hours. but um, if, if, I'll tell you this. If you see a... Uh, on a higher glyph, if you see a standing deer, a deer standing up on its hind legs, that means first man. If you see a coil, you know, the spiral that opens up to the left, it means to come. If you see a coil that opens up to the right, it means to go. If you if you see uh, let's see what else uh, you don't really have to know too many what the meaning of too many symbols are before you can start to figure out those those hieroglyphs what they're talking about the one I read was very spiritual it, it was about it was a story about creation very similar to Adam and Eve uh, the standing deer is called a key K I it's the same key as, as the Sumerians. Key means earth. <laughs> K-I. You know, that's uh, like Enki. Right. Heaven and earth. Uh, but but the, it, the story went that the two deer were there. They had the symbol for God above them. And they had the symbol for God's power as applied to man. A wavy line coming out of that circle toward those two guy, two people and that they were speaking they had a an arrow coming out of their mouth and going to heaven meaning they spoke directly to God it was very similar to, to the Bible story uh, the only difference was that the woman was on an equal with God I mean with uh, with the man they were no superiority of the man over the woman because they had a male deer standing with no horns and had a female deer standing with horns. And that, that meant that they were both co-equal, crisscrossed. Uh, so, you know, that, that was uh, uh, the story, you know, the, uh, their creation story, very much like that found in the Bible. First man. They don't just sit there and chisel on those rocks for nothing. No, uh, they don't. It, they, <laughs> you know, it, it was, they had a serious story to tell. I think it's 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 all in, uh, intertwined. I, I I get the impression that these quote unquote giants, uh, Bigfoot, Sasquatch, Grassmen. Uh, these mounds, these circular mounds, ley lines, hieroglyphs, there was something. And I have a hard time believing the time. I'm not saying that this place is not billions of years old. I have no problem with that. What I have a problem with is the timeline of trying to push everything back so far, maybe 10,000, 20,000, 30,000 years knowing how weathering is and how erosion is and, and a lot of other things. Well, I got what, a feeling what, that this stuff happened a lot. A lot. What, is, what is a year? It's man-man construct of the well, well, <laughs> well, I mean, it's a measurement of the distance it takes in the time for the earth to go around um, the sun. The sun. Back. Right. Oh, what if it What if it was closer to the sun or something and was in times past and went faster? Would that still be a year? 
you know, things change. Yeah, yeah, it would be. It would be in a way. I mean, it's like because you know, if something if, happened, something if, happened to the Earth that was cataclysmic. There's no doubt about that because the Earth is still in a perturbation from it. Is it? It's the it wobbles. It's called precession. Right. And if you sped it up, you can see it's it's, it's a very unstable. It's just shakes like quivers, you know. And the moon does too. The moon rocks back and forth like this right here. They're, they're both affected by whatever happened. They have a, it's, it's called resonance. The resonance is uh, still there. It hadn't settled out. And what if this happens a lot more often than we'd like to admit? Well, I mean, when, when we measure time, we measure it according to how things are now. Right. But it may not have always been like that. It may have, we may not have always had the moon. If the moon were not there, then the earth would spin much, much faster. The moon regulates the spin of the earth. So you see what I mean? We don't know at what point that we captured the moon. We don't have any idea. We know that it's it's moving out away from the earth at, at about an inch and a half a year. Well, there's a theory out there that some something might have brought it into our well if you can if you can reverse that at some point in time it was much closer to the earth. You see what I mean? So uh -huh. you get something that, that big with that much mass that cl real close to the earth, then it's it's everything's gonna be in, in a violent convulsion and it's moved out to where it is now and it's steady moving out has less and less effect on us well it, was just, it brings up the, the, the hypothesis but it, i don't know how much validity is in it of like almost the moon itself has uh like a coil action where it goes out and comes back and calls out i don't know how it can validify that but not but what if, you know, when you have these cataclysmic events, it is associated with the sun more, I mean, the, with the moon more than the sun. You know uh, maybe. I, I, I had an animation of that. Oh, actually, it was a photographic animation. Let me just see if I get lucky and just type in the moon and see what happens. Let's see if I still have that. I don't understand what's going on. Do you have two monitors or just one? No, I just have one. Uh, it might be a good idea to get two monitors. You would have less of this, uh, what's going on there, you know. That? <laughs> That's what I use, two monitors. So, One to present images or to share, present, and then the other one to as far gotcha. as you on the show. They're pretty cheap. To get a second one used, so if you get it around to that, might help you out. Um, this, like I said, this is all kind of new to me. I ha I haven't had much experience with the uh, this type of broadcasting. Well, I I want to end this. We can still talk if you okay. want. No, that's all right. We do it another time. Yeah, well, I want hopefully we do it real soon, like we just did. You know. This be the end of part two. The reason why, because I'm 55 and I got to use. <laughs> I got to use the bathroom, man. I'm 67 and I have to do double. <laughs> so after two, I, I think I was pretty proud of myself for holding out for over two hours. There you man. go. That was pretty good, you know. Um, but um, oh, we'll talk more about this. You know, think about that. Let's think about. We never even got any chance to go into great depth about uh, Lovelock uh, Cave. But we did get a chance to look at some of the detailed images of, of uh, Patty, and we got a chance to talk uh, on an overview of some things that I, the more and more I study this stuff, the more and more it's hard for me not to seem or, or to, to project at least that assume that there's a correlation between all this stuff. And at this place, not too far ago, I mean, I'm not saying like 100 years, 
uh, who knows 500 years but i mean the time you get to the time of you know of christ you know things become very blurry uh yeah yeah you guys they call that the the mists of time and so what could, it could also be contributing to that and this is one of those arguments they have when it comes to the cataclysmic events is that we build ourselves up to a certain point and something happens and it sends us all back to the stone ages and we build ourselves up and it sends us all back to the stone ages and this is part of the cycle of life in this place as well and if wonderful what we're seeing is uh images or memories of that uh, time past literally in which things were so much different than they are today you know yeah. You, you can look at the moon and see how beat up it is, especially on its backside. Uh, and you can watch it do this if you speed it up. And that's what I was going to try to show you. It rocks like this right here. So it's it's going, it, it, it's that's pertu, what you call a perturbation uh, it, it, or a libration. Libration. Uh, Sometimes it shows the, the southern side more. Sometimes it shows the northern side more. But it rocks back and forth between them. And that's leftover resonance from a violent event. Something that was so geomagnetically violent that it, it, it both the earth and the moon were affected. And the earth ends up 21 degrees backwards leaning and spinning in a wobble. And the moon is doing this right here. If you do them together, that's what they're doing. <laughs> <laughs> and that's 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 pretty clear. That's from a violent event. Uh, it it's it's it takes over time and it'll settle, but it's moving away. So its effect on the Earth is going to become less and less. The Earth will actually speed up as it moves out. The Earth will speed up the rotation. I just, uh, I just wonder if that's what they do. It's kind of there's this coiling effect where it goes out, comes back in, just like the wobbling has this. this there ever is never for any pure uh, stability. It's, it, yeah, I don't, I, don't I, don't know if will, I don't know if it will will come back in or not. Uh, if it has an elliptical orbit, you know that'll bring it closer and farther, closer and farther. But uh, actually, physically changing its orbit I, I don't see anything to make it do it unless something exterior an exterior force you know intervened and did it well there's a theory out there that they call the phoenix effect right the rising of the phoenix and that it's real true symbolic meaning is it's something electrical or something electromagnetic something happens and which Maybe there's a combination of what the sun is doing, the climate of this planet. Was, there was something so violent that it caused two continents on the Earth to sink into the mantle. Uh, the, the crust of the Earth actually broke up and gave way beneath them. Right. And they sank into the mantle. And the Earth was in an egg shape. Just like the tides are now, the tides are in an egg shape. You have a, 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 a what you call a, a, you have a tide on one side of the earth, and then you have another tide on the opposite side. And it, the, the earth, the water is actually in an egg shape, and that egg moves around like this. It's, so you have two tides in 24 hours. But <laughs> that, that, that that's quite a disturbance but if you, if the moon was a lot closer the the crust of the earth would start to do that the crust of the earth would try would start to split and break and uh, uh and you would <sighs> violence like you never could imagine yeah i'm just i'm just a lot of people are starting to think i think they were thinking about this uh, those in the know, especially when we got, um, geology and uh, 
geologists and et cetera, and historicists and anthropologists were thinking about this 100 plus years ago. And I think they might have had some validity. I think a lot of people are coming back to this whole idea of the cataclysmic events that happened and a much more disturbingly more regular and more short periods of time. Instead of millions of years, we're talking thousands of years. Which now it could make sense and it could be because they're you know they're finding you know in areas all over the world where there shouldn't be you well, know, if, if, if the earth were say it didn't have a moon and it was spinning at double the rate day and night was coming at twice the rate and it's not leaning backwards it's leaning perpendicular to the sun uh -huh. how much less would you weigh at the equator uh Right now, the way it's spinning now, you're about five pounds less at the equator. Uh, but if you, if you, it would go up exponentially if you doubled it. Uh, so maybe, maybe those big megalithic stones didn't quite weigh as much as they back then. Uh, or maybe a uh, hundred ton dinosaur was only 50 or 40. Relatively speaking, yeah. Yeah. Relatively speaking, you know, uh, you know, all things should be considered. You know, they're 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 so outlandish under present conditions that we scratch our heads and say, well, him, they must have have an anti gravity machine or something. You know, any we try to come up with a way, but you know, it, it would probably you know that would probably work too, if this if the there was no moon. And the earth was well, spinning rapidly. Well, isn't that the, the legends that there was no moon? Not, not too distant past, and that uh, Venus was a lot closer. Well, when, when all of that is considered, that's a definitely is a possibility. We had, I mean, mathematics will tell you that, that the moon wasn't always there. If we look at the phases of Venus and the phases of the moon, they're very similar, aren't they? Uh, it, it the moon actually came from somewhere. It's there now. <laughs> it it had if, to bring it in just to bring it in, and within the gravity field of the Earth, is tremendously violent. And you know we look at the old. I'm going to just bring up something else. It's just to, so Jesus says, allegedly says in the Book of Revelation, "I am the bright." And the morning star, right? Yeah. And the reference uh, uh, of uh, astrotheology throughout the scriptures is quite overwhel it's overwhelming, to be honest with you. And so, um, what does he mean by that? Because that's like a reference to Venus. It is. It is a reference to Venus. That's the and morning so star. So, what if... Venus is both. It's an evening and morning. What if the what birthed out of Venus was the moon? It doesn't necessarily mean that it literally happened, but from you say you are stand you you are here two thousand years ago or what whatever it was because even the dates of it are questionable if we're here. but um and just say you're there in one moment Venus is a lot closer and you're paying attention to the phase of the Venus and something cataclysmic happens and somehow this thing we call the moon shows up. In the process, mirroring basically uh, the, the phases, but in just a, a little times time difference as far as the year goes, right? Uh, where a year is on Venus compared to what is here. And I just, um, I wonder if something, something big, bigger happened than we're being told, right? What well, I'm saying is, in the in the in these tablets in Sri Lanka, when they were able to translate them. It, it told the story of the sinking of Mu and of Atlantis. Right. And, and it said that that it was a geomagnetic disturbance, something from space. And then there's, 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 there's many people feel that that, that disturbance was the moon itself. 
Well, I guess it's, it's that possibility is there. But but so then if you look at it and you look the way things like from where we're seeing it, you just like something major happened and we're not watching. You would think with all this time we should witness uh, more kind of asteroid impact on the moon or something like that. You know what I'm saying? We're not seeing any of that kind of stuff like something major happened a long, long time ago. Or not so much a long time ago. That's all a question. But. I really don't know uh, the the what, about those type things. Uh, what it would take to to sweep away the debris from that, or anything like that. You have to work out those logistics and see if they fit. Well, this is just maddening. You would think after all this alleged stuff that's happened over the past 50, 60 years. That we would have a little better understanding of some of these things, <laughs> and we just need to. Well, I mean, there's Bigfoot research. There's always more questions than answers. It just keeps building upon question, upon question, upon question, and I just like, you know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? Well, lo lo logic, logic tells you that that because the moon is spiraling away from us, that you can apply mathematics to that in reverse, and you'll know that the moon was much closer. If it was much closer, it was it was tearing just tearing at the earth, you know, at one time, and, and uh, so it's moving away, and now we're we're in a state of a lot calmer, even though we still have this little precession going, and it's still going like this, but it, we dwell together, but it's it's making its way back away further and further. Uh, over long periods of time, it'll it'll eventually go be too far out to do anything to us. You know, we'll speed up. Our day won't be 24 hours anymore. It'll speed up. Yeah. Well, let's end this. Let's talk more about this. This, as usual, it leads us on all sorts of places. <laughs> all right. Well, we, we're, we're, literally, it has led us all sorts of places from Love Luck. Uh, cave to the mounds and nor um, to the second largest mound in, in the North America down where you're at, which we should do something Dr. more about. Rock. Yeah, we, and to the moon itself and the relationship with the moon and Earth. So nothing is as it seems. I um, need to use the bathroom. So this will be end of uh, Part two with the series of MK Davis, and I sure hope in the next week or two we have part three. Well, anytime you want to. We'll well, yeah. Out. So uh, I will reach out to you, reach you in the next couple of days. You got anything else going on? Anything to let people know about? No, no, not right now. You guys, he's on. You can look up. It's just MK Davis and YouTube, and he. I mean, it's worth paying attention to what he's doing because the lessons. He's one of the, I have to be seriously honest about this. He's one of the few places out there that you're actually going to learn something if you just pay attention. It's difficult at times, I understand, because you got to sit back and actually pay attention. Um, yeah. and it's not a bunch of imagery. That, it's a complex subject. Yeah. I yeah. mean, so thank you, my friend. Okay, everyone else, thank you for joining us. Uh, oh, yeah, by the way, for those who are interested, of, of all people, I'm going to be talking to, um, Mike, uh, Sasquatch, Ontario. That should be very interesting. We're like, oh, yeah, yeah, for sure. You know, for his his experience and what what nuggets can a truth can we gain from that? And I think that um, you know he's gone through a lot. There's a lot of criticism about his his um, his claims, and but you know what? After all this time, MK. And it hasn't been that long for me, but you've been here doing it a lot much longer. But one thing is certain. Nothing's impossible when it comes to this stuff, right? And, and everything's on the table. <laughs> so <laughs> you know, my, my mind is open. And, and you know, if I have a reason to disbelieve something, I will. But uh, I just don't just brush it off just because. I think you it's know? the approach you have to be like trust plus verification. And it's a constant balance between that. It, it is. Trust. And, and when the trust is lost, and I've had, I've been burned by, but eventually the truth usually comes out with enough time. 
the some you know hoaxer will finally be exposed somebody who said that the, the, the was you know sharing the truth about their experience there'll be correlations and there'll be something common that the theme that shows up and many others and you say well the probabilities are highly there but here's the problem you know, like with my encounters um although uh i've had it's, it's been shared with others i can't even find i don't even know where to find those people now it's only been six years i don't have no idea where to find that crow medicine man i have no idea people come and go and and so i, I it's, i'm still stuck with just just my my you have to tr believe me or not you, if you don't believe me i understand because why should you until you have your own experiences so anything's on the table Seeing's believe it. It seems to be that's the case. But and then, <laughs> once you see something, do you even know what you're seeing or what to believe in? You know what I mean? I mean, that's it becomes that complicated. It really does. It's one thing to, I mean, even if you were to, to witness Patty and you're as close as they were, you still struggle to the day you die. What the hell you were witnessing, what you were experiencing, right? Well, I'll tell you, what you do is you tend to rationalize it. Uh, after a while, you say, uh, maybe it was a bear. You know, but something yeah. that's you're more comfortable with. Uh, if, if if something bothers you enough, you know, you, 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 the tendency is strong to, to after a while, try to explain it away and get it get it out of your system you know where it's not bothering you uh people i, I know people who said i saw a sasquatch you know i saw him De dead right so he's right in front of me and five years later so, you know, you know it could have been a bear you know <laughs> well, i know what i saw could not have been a bear or anything else but then the same token it didn't add up to what a patty was you know what i mean because especially when the things are going through trees and popping out trees and that's all another thing we'll have to talk about here's another thing to talk about in the future is think about talk about is this place a simulation how much of this oh, yeah. is, is, is just a light show? how much i don't know who's doing the simulating that's what i want to know <laughs> yeah that's a, that's, a, that's a good question isn't it who is he's so. not doing a very good job <laughs> this, we're not liking it too much so all right i'm gonna this is the end of the show folks we'll see you again soon all right good night good